This is a CAD drawing of a pressure vessel built in Fusion 360. It is a cast iron pressure vessel where both the cylinder, the flange, and the top cap are all made of cast iron. I am applying preloads to the bolted connections where I have washers at the top and I also include washers at the bottom which serve as targets for applying the bolt preloads. I apply an internal pressure to the pressure vessel. All right, so I have these load cases and I am applying preloads to the bolted connections and that's sort of a complicated thing to end up doing. But nonetheless, what you can see here, when you just look from the outside of the pressure vessel, if I exaggerate the deformation field is that we have pretty good contact at the interface between the top cap flange and the pressure cylinder flange and it falls off as we move away from the center line of the bolt. And so I get an exaggeration exaggerated deformation at the contact patch between two adjacent bolts. In this particular case, I have six bolts holding the top cap down. I have a really awful top cap where I didn't create a hemispherical one, it's just a flat cap. But nonetheless, this gives you a really good idea of what is happening when we have a bolted connection. And the great thing about doing this in CAD is that we can very easily change the number of bolts. But before we do that, we want to just take a look at the contact pressure field at the interface between the top cap and the cylinder. And I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that exaggeration deformation field and now you can also see on the outside of the flange you see that uh, typical frustum development in the stress field that we use as a simplification to calculate the load sharing between the bolt and the compressed member. I want to look at the interface between the top and bottom flanges. That is the compressed surface where I would have a gasket and that gasket would be used to contain the pressure on the inside of this pressure vessel. So I'm just going to go ahead and hide the top and I'm going to look down on the top of it. And instead of doing a von Mises stress, I'm going to go ahead and do a stress normal to the surface. You'll notice that because the top cap is bolted to the bottom cap that the top cap and bottom cap want to move relative to each other so it creates some bending stresses in these bolts that I have passing through and that's going to create some tension in those bolts as well. But I'm going to go ahead and use a surface probe and that's going to allow me to show the variability of the pressure as I move between the bolts. So I have a pretty high pressure right there. My pressure is varying. It's going, it's moving around a bit, right? And so at some point you have to ask yourself, do I have a sufficient clamping pressure at this interface to be able to contain the liquid or gas that is pressurized on the inside? And do I have to change the number of bolts that I have in my bolted connection? Now that we have a good three-dimensional view of the pressure vessel, we're going to go ahead and calculate by hand the fatigue factors of safety. We're going to use a Goodman mean stress correction factor, which requires us to know the endurance strength, the ultimate strength, the preload, the joint stiffness, all of the parameters shown here. And we need the joint compliance so we can figure out how load is shared between the bolt and the member when we apply that internal pressure. Our last set of diagrams showed a CAD and FEA analysis. Now we're going to do things by hand where we calculate the stress amplitude, mean stress, and the initial preload stress, sigma i. Now we are going to assume that the stress varies and if the stress follows a sinusoidal pattern we need to know the mean load applied to the end cap and the load amplitude. And we're going to take those loads and we're going to convert those into stresses for the bolt. So how are we going to do that? We're going to say that the stress amplitude is the joint stiffness times the force amplitude divided by the threaded area. The mean stress is the preload divided by the threaded area plus the joint stiffness times the mean applied load divided by the thread area. That's the information we need for those two. And we also have to understand that the sigma i is equal to the initial preload fi divided by the threaded area.
now it's pretty easy to find the max and min loads that we're applying and from that we can easily find the load amplitude it is given by one half the max load minus the minimum load that's applied to the cap the mean load is the average of the max and the min loads that are applied to the cap. Now remember, we're going to give a pressure load, and so we have to convert that into a force that's being applied to the end cap. And then that force is distributed using the joint stiffness, and it becomes the mean and the stress amplitudes. So you just recall that the initial stress in the bolt is the preload Fi divided by the threaded area. So the example problem is what we just did in CAD, except instead of using a hemispherical end cap, I just used a flat end cap. It's all made of cast iron. Everything is 3 quarters of an inch thick, including the flanges through which the bolts apply the pre-compression load. And we just need to figure out what the force is that's acting on the end cap. And we have to understand that there's a gasket that must be compressed that prevents the internal gas or fluid from leaking out through the interface. Now, the one thing we don't know is how many bolts we want to use. I ended up using six in the CAD drawing. All the bolts are 5 ace 11 UNC, so they're coarse threads. They are two and a quarter inches long, and they are grade five bolts. So we know the, the nominal dimensions, we know the threaded areas, we can look these things up, and we also know by knowing the grade what the endurance and ultimate strengths are for the given bolts. When we have that information, we can calculate all the factors of safety that we need. Now we take that internal pressure, I'm saying it's 1,273 PSI, it's varying from 0 to 1,273, and so that creates a variable load that acts on the cylinder walls and the head. So in this case, when we go from 0 to 1,273, the load amplitude is equal to the mean load, which is going to be one half the maximum load. This makes it a quite simple calculation. So we have a variable load, which means that we have to calculate a fatigue factor of safety. Right, so we take that pressure and we convert it into a load. I know that I want a load factor of safety of two on the bolts, that's just what somebody has told me they want. So we specify the load factor of safety and you ask how many bolts do we need? So how many bolts N do we need? Now what we need to figure that out is first the force on the cap, which is just equal to the projected area of the end cap multiplied by the internal pressure. Our projected area is pi times three squared and our pressure is 1,273 pounds per square inch. This gives us a value of 36,000 pounds. We divide that by the number of bolts, and that becomes the load that we are applying to each of the bolts that is holding the cap to the cylinder. We're going to use the load factor of safety equation, which we introduced before where we have the fraction of load carried by the bolts times the factor of safety times the load on each bolt, P over N. We have that preload Fi, and we set all of that equal to the proof strength times the threaded area. Now, if we want to reuse the bolts, we can't load to more than 75% of the proof load. We look up the proof strength and the threaded area. We multiply that by 0.75. We find the proof strength from a table, and we find it to be 85 kpsi. The threaded area we look up in a table. It is just the mean, by the way, of the root and the major. It's 0.226 square inches. So now we're going to uh, 
calculate the initial preload, it's 14,408 pounds on each of the bolts. We have the preload. And so we can go back to our original equation. We put the preload, we put the proof strength in, we put the threaded area in. And we will calculate our joint stiffness using a spreadsheet. Enter our spreadsheet. The first thing I do up here is ask, is it bolted into a threaded plate? And in this case, the answer is no. My bolt diameter is 0.625 inches. It is a UNC thread. The bolt length I have to change. It's 2.25. And so my threaded length is 1.5 inches. My bolt area is something that I get off of a built-in chart. My threaded area is for 0.625, it's 0.226. My bolt modulus, it's made of steel, so I'm gonna use 30 MPSI. I do not have a top washer, so this 0.095, I gotta turn that into zero. And then I have that the bottom washer slave to the top washer. I don't have a bottom washer e either in this case. But my top plate thickness is 0.75. My lower plate thickness is 0.75, so my overall grip length is going to be 1.5 inches. My bolt modulus is 30. I don't have a washer at the top, but I have to enter the proper modulus in here. I'm going to use 14.5 MPSI for cast iron. I use drop-down menus. Is it threaded into a plate? Yes or no. I have drop-down menus. I say no. Is the bolt threaded the full length? I have a drop-down menu. Yes or no. I say say no. A calculation of my bolt and member stiffness. You can see that my bolt stiffness is 5.205. My member stiffness is 9.265. And from that, I calculate a joint stiffness of 0.36. Now that I have my joint stiffness C of 0.36, I go back to my load factor of safety equation. I enter everything that I happen to know. And I solve for the number of bolts shown here, where I have divided by the proof strength, the threaded area minus Fi. And now I can take that equation and enter the 0.36 joint stiffness, the factor of safety of two, my 36,000 pound total load, my 85,000 PSI proof strength, my 0.226 square inch cross-sectional area, and my preload of 14,408 pounds. If I do that, I get 5.4 bolts required. Now, I can't have a fractional number of bolts, so of course, I'm going to have to round up. I'm gonna get six bolts in the cylinder head. Now we know that we take the total applied load and we divide by six and that gives us the load per bolt of 6,000 pounds. I'm going to enter my spreadsheet values of the joint stiffness and then I'm going to use those in my opening factor of safety where I enter everything else that I know. The preload, the load P of 6,000 pounds because now we're talking about individual bolts and the 0 0.36 joint stiffness that turns out to be 0.64. One minus that is 0.64. We get an opening factor of safety of 3.75. We already figured a load factor of safety, but now we're going to update it because we know the number of bolts that we need. We need six bolts, not 5.4. So we enter everything that we have and we get a load factor of safety that should be greater than what we originally specified. We specified two, and when we do this calculation, we're going to find that our load factor of safety is 2.22. It's a little bit bigger. Now we're going to use our fatigue factor of safety equation, and we're going to look up the endurance strength in the table, given the grade 5 bolt, the ultimate, 120 kpsi. We figured out our initial stress, that was that 14,408 pounds, divided by 0 0.226 square inches. And that gives us a preload value of 63.8 kips. We know that the load goes from 0 to 1273 pressure, which means 0 to 6,000 pounds max per bolt. The stress amplitude is half of that maximum load. That's 3,000 pounds. That's equal to the mean, another 3,000 pounds. 
And so we then find our stress amplitude by taking the 3,000 pounds, multiplying that by the joint stiffness, and divide it by the threaded area of 0.226 square inches. And this gives us a stress amplitude of 4,779 pounds per square inch. The mean stress is the same as the stress amplitude. We now have everything we need, except we got to add to that the preload, sigma i. So our total mean stress is 68,578 psi. Now we can finally calculate our, our calculations fact in a spreadsheet. We're going to use equation 838 to do that, where we enter all the values that we have either looked up or have calculated. We have everything we need at this point, and so we are going to. In this portion of my spreadsheet, I input the bolt fatigue parameters. And in this case, I'm going to need the bolt ultimate strength, which is 120 kpsi. My bolt proof strength, which is 85 kpsi. The endurance strength of 18.5, 18.6, whatever we get from the chart. Our preload, which is 14408. Our member stiffness, my bolt stiffness, was 5.205. My threaded area is 0.226. The maximum tensile load that I'm applying is six kips. The minimum is zero. I preload my bolt to 75% of the proof strength, and I get these amplitudes of three kips, mean load of three kips, my joint compliance of 0.36. I get a stress amplitude of 4.77. This is something that we already calculated by hand. I'm just showing you that it works out again. We have a mean stress of 68,578. That's right there. We have a pre-stress of 63,800. So that my opening factor of safety is 3.75 shown here which agrees with my hand calc. My proof strength factor of safety, which I never did calculate, is 1.16. My overload factor of safety is 2.22. I calculated that. And my Goodman factor of safety in this case is 1.58. So all of our factors of safety are greater than one. This bolted connection will have infinite life.